Hi guys, my name is Jackson and I just wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about servant leadership and uh, what leading, leading by serving means to me. Um, so to start off, um, I look at leadership from both a uh, Christian perspective as well as a secular perspective. Um, so I just wanted to start off by talking about um, what leadership means to me from more of a secular perspective. Um, throughout this course, we studied a number of different authors that talked about servant leadership uh, and what servant leadership meant to them from their perspective. Um, so this first author that we um, we studied was a guy by the name of Robert Greenleaf. Um, some call him the granddaddy of, of servant leadership because he was one who um, introduced the idea of servant leadership. Um, so one of the quotes that he had in his book, uh, The Servant Leader, um, he explains what servant leadership is um, from his own perspective. Um, this is what he says. Uh, the servant leader is a servant first. It begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve, to serve first. Then conscious choice brings one to aspire to lead. That person is sharply different from one who is leader first. So to, to me, this means that, you know, that this is something that people are born with, um, they have this desire to um, serve others um, and create a better world for them. But I also think that this is something that can be learned as well. Um, Larry Spears is one of the next authors that we looked at um, when it comes to servant leadership. Um, and he studied um, closely under Robert Greenleaf. Um, and one thing that I really liked from him was one of his journal, journal articles um, that talked about 10 characteristics of an effective and caring leader. He explains that these characteristics are listening, empathy, healing, awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, commitment to the growth of people, and then finally building a community. Um, I think these are great characteristics for, for any leader to have and definitely characteristics of an effective servant leader. Um, the next author that we looked at from a secular perspective was a guy by the name of Jim Collins, um, and he wrote the book, Good to Great, Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't. Um, one thing that I really liked from, from his book was when he talked about um, the level five hierarchy and level five executives. Um, he explains that level five executives are similar to that of a servant leader. Um, but you have to go through all five levels of the hierarchy in order to get to be a level five executive. Um, and those levels are becoming a highly capable individual, um, contributing team manager, the competent manager, the effective leader, and then finally level five is a level five executive. Um, he explains that level five executives are humble in nature and not boastful. Um, they are extremely ambitious and do what it takes for the company and those around them. Um, they are devoted to the growth and the de development of their followers. And finally, they are very quick to give recognition to their followers and very quick to take the blame when things are not going right. right. Um, so that's kind of my secular perspective of servant leadership. Um, now I'm going to kind of jump into um, more of my Christian perspective of servant leadership. Um, as a Christian, we know that the best example of a servant leader is Jesus Christ. Um, so I think for me personally, to become a better servant leadership, we must look at Jesus' teachings and what he says um, about leadership. Um, so we studied two different authors when it comes to um, a Christian perspective of servant leadership. We studied uh, Gene Wilkes in uh, Jesus on Leadership, and we also studied uh, Ken Blanchard um, and the servant leader. Um, so I thought Gene Wilkes does a really good job of explaining um, what servant leadership is, how Jesus led, and how we can incorporate um, what Jesus did into our own leadership styles. Um, he gives us seven different principles of servant leadership that Jesus had and also calls us to have. The first of those is to humble your heart and not be boastful. Um, the second is to first be a follower before we be can become leaders. We have to first 
be great at being a follower. And the third principle is that we need to find greatness in service, recognizing that um, service is extremely valuable um, to developing um, followers. Uh, fourth is we need to take risks. Um, we can't be afraid of failure. Um, we have to recognize that Jesus and God are on our side, um, and we can rest assured taking those risks. Fifth, we have to take up the towel. One of the best acts of service that we've seen was Jesus washing the, the feet of his disciples, um, and he calls us to do the same um, with our followers. Um, sixth is to share responsibility and authority. And then finally, seven, which goes along with that, is to build a team. Um, we need to recognize that we can't do everything on our own, um, so we have to surround ourselves with, with people all trying to achieve a common goal. Um, so that was uh, Jesus on Leadership by Gene Wilkes. Again, very good book. And then uh, The Servant Leader by Ken Blanchard, also a great one that kind of highlights uh, Jesus' leadership. Um, and one thing that I really liked about his book um, was when he talked about um, the five habits of a servant leader. Um, he explains that those habits are practicing solitude, you know, being by yourself, um, experiencing prayer, you know, spending that time alone with God and asking him to reveal to you um, his purpose for your life, um, applying scripture, spending time in God's word um, to, to help prepare you for future battles, um, abiding in God's unconditional love, and then finally maintaining supportive relationships, you know, and surrounding yourself with people um, who care for you and want the best for you. So that was a uh, a little bit about servant leadership and my perspective from a secular and a Christian perspective. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about how I want to lead going forward, um, knowing all of the knowledge that I have now about servant leadership. Um, so the position of leadership that I'm currently in right now is uh, I coach basketball for, <coughs> excuse me, a group of seventh grade girls. And uh, that that's my leadership position. These girls look to me as their leader. Um, I hope to have future leadership positions going forward, but for now I want to make the most of my time there. Um, so first of all, uh, I want to incorporate all that I've learned from this class. You know, I want to incorporate the seven principles that I talked about earlier from, from Wilkes. I want to incorporate the five habits from Blanchard, um, the level five hierarchy from Jim Collins, and then also the 10 characteristics from, from Spears. Um, I want to be able to incorporate all of those into my leadership style um, to help me become a better leader. Um, the second thing is, um, from a more of a Christian perspective, is uh, I think I need to do a better job of loving God, which is our first and greatest commandment, um, and obeying his laws to serve others. And then secondly, our second greatest commandment, which is to love others. Um, I think a lot can be solved in this world if we just do a better job at loving God and loving others. Um, third is I want to make service a habit. Um, the first step in making service a habit is being aware of the needs of others. Um, once we are aware of those needs, we need to make a conscious effort to serve those needs. Um, and once we can continuously to do this over and over again, service will eventually become a habit um, and that will in turn help me become a better servant leader. Um, fourthly is I want to put a lot of emphasis on developing relationships and developing trust within those relationships. Um, throughout this course, I studied, um, coach Mike Krzyzewski from Duke basketball, and he really emphasizes the importance of developing trust in relationships. Um, when you develop trust, um, then people reveal stuff about themselves and you can reveal stuff, things about your own life. Um, and once you develop that trust in those relationships, you, you can begin um, to teach them and they can begin to teach you as well. And then finally, um, I want to build a team. Um, Wilkes um, talks about that in Principle 7 of um, his book, Jesus on Leadership. Um, another great book about this is a book by John Gordon and Mike Smith um, in You Win in the Locker Room First. Um, I think this is a super valuable book that talks about seven different C's to creating a, a winning team. Um, 
those C's are creating a positive culture, um, being contagious with your energy, um, providing a consistent message, um, communicating with them, connecting with them, um, showing them that you're committed, and then finally showing them that you care. I think if you, if I'm able to incorporate these seven C's into my leadership style forward, going forward, I'm going to build a great team and have a lot of success as a servant leader. So yeah, that's it from me. I uh, hope you guys could take something from, from this and possibly apply it to your own leadership styles going forward. Thanks.